I hope that our few remaining friends give up on trying to save us. I hope we come up with a fail-safe plot to piss off the dumb few that forgave us. I hope the fences we mended fall down beneath their own weight. And I hope we hang on past the last exit. I hope it's already too late. And I hope the junkyard a few blocks from here someday burns down. And I hope the rising black smoke carries me far away. And I never come back to this town again. In my life, I hope I lie. What up, Mother Machachos? We're back with another episode of Hossman Reviews. So remember in my last vid about David Flair's wrestling career when I mentioned a certain pay-per-view was a dumpster fire? Well, here we go! Today, I bring you a review of possibly one of the worst WCW pay-per-views of all time and possibly one of the worst pay-per-views I've ever seen. A show that is absolutely, without a doubt, Vince Russo era WCW at its absolute peak. This show is The Great American Bash 2000. Be prepared, folks, as we dive into a show riddled with nonsensical stipulations, outside interference in almost every match, and one of the worst heel turns in professional wrestling history. Without further ado, Let's dive in to WCW Great American Bash 2000. But before we do that, pile drive that like button, smack someone in the head with that bell icon, and subscribe for more wrestling content. Let's begin. The show opens with a promo from the Misfits in Action where Chavo Guerrero does a Scarface quote and pulls out a toy grenade for some fucking reason. He's defending the Cruiserweight title against Disco Inferno, representing the Filthy Animals while wearing a Lakers jersey for some fucking reason. Disco throws up a gang sign, then gets attacked from behind as Chavo hits a cool flippy move. Chavo hits a running crossbody and gets a two count as Disco then drops Chavo on the top rope. Chavo hits a hurricane run into the outside as M.I.A. starts beating up Disco. Hello, DQ Chavo here. I heard no mention of this being a lumberjack match. Chavo hits a pump handle suplex as the commentary team starts calling Disco Hip Hop Inferno. Ugh. Disco goes for a back suplex, but Chavo lands on his feet and hits one of his own. Chavo sends Disco to the outside, then hits a flying splash, while Mark Mann on commentary says, INCOMING! making one of many shitty jokes on this show. Filthy animals then start beating up Chavo outside. Okay, now DQ Disco. Disco hits a flying axe handle as then an old man in an army uniform comes to ringside? The old man starts flirting with Tigress and the camera is not even focusing on the match anymore as Conan shoves the old man down. Hoofintude Guerrera then attacks Chavo while the ref is distracted by the bickering factions and he goes for the people's elbow? <laughs> what the hell is going on here? Disco then hits a stunner on Chavo, but then Lash LaRue hits a side Russian leg sweep on him, then throws Chavo on top of him for the win. As all hell then breaks loose, Major Guns then rips her top off and revives the old man, who immediately tries to sexually assault her. This match gets a D-. Honestly, it could have been a good match. Maybe even match of the night, because you have Chavo Guerrero and Disco Inferno. Two really damn good workers who could put on at least a two-star match with a wet piece of toast. But no, they had to have all this weird booking that doesn't make any fucking sense, and why do I have a feeling that this is going to plague the rest of the card? Eric Bischoff and Ernest Miller then talk with security to make sure Goldberg doesn't get in the arena. Big Vito and Johnny the Bull, the Mamalukes, then cut a promo about their matchup next with Chronic. And we get an ad for people who bought the pay-per-view to get a Hulk Hogan inflatable raft. Did any of the 85,000 people who ordered this pay-per-view actually get one of these? I just gotta know. 
We now go to that match where the commentary team doesn't even acknowledge either team making their entrance. Also, the name graphic spells Chronic's name wrong. Chronic beats up the Italians as Vito and Johnny then stop to polish the hardcore belt. Also, the bell has already rung, yet nobody's being counted out here. Brian Clark and Johnny start things off as Clark just batters him with a Uranagi. Clark then hits a Russian leg sweep on the guardrail. Johnny fights back with a spinning kick as Vito tags in, still wearing the belt, and he just hits a bunch of weak-looking axe handles for tagging out. Clark hits a tilt-the-wall backbreaker, then tags out to Brian Adams, who hits a full Nelson slam. Big Vito breaks up the pin as his belt almost falls off his waist. Clark is back in now as Johnny goes to leap over him, but gets caught in a running power slam. And now I'm just reminded about Braun Strowman. Seriously, why the fuck did you guys release him, WWE? For fuck's sake, that company is going in the shitter, kind of like WCW was back here. Anyway, Vito is still adjusting the belt while DeBryans continuously beat on Johnny. You know, I seriously hate that trope in tag team matches when one guy just gets beat up through the whole thing. For fuck's sake, you guys both need to be pulling your weight. Also, Tony Schiavone accidentally calls Adam's Adam Bomb, which was Clark's original gimmick in WWF, not Adam's. Johnny fights back with a DDT, then tags out to Vito, who batters Adams, until he tags out and Dub Bryant's hit a double back body drop. Then they take the belt off Vito, as Adams hits the F5 on Vito, but only gets a two count. Guess Brian Adams needs a trip to Suplex City for messing up Brock Lesnar's finisher. Both guys tag out as Johnny hits a power slam on Clark, then goes for a flying move, but almost falls off the turnbuckle then hits a flying nothing flat on the canvas. Vito basically, he basically abandons his partner to polish the title belt, while DeBryans hit a double choke slam called High Time on Johnny for the three. I'm gonna give this match a C minus, not really anything that special, and like I said, it has that stupid trope where one of the guys is just getting beat up for the whole damn match. Our next match is an ambulance match featuring Mike Awesome with his rip-off Marilyn Manson theme and Diamond Dallas Page with his rip-off Nirvana theme. Chris Canyon is also sitting on the entrance ramp wearing a halo and in a wheelchair because he got tossed off the top of a cage from Slamboree. Both guys immediately start brawling as they both punch the referee for being completely unnecessary for an ambulance match. The two guys then have a sword fight with two steel chairs, and I realize I completely missed an opportunity to play Duel of the Fates here. Awesome gets whipped into the corner, but springs off for a back elbow. I'm a huge mark for big men that can do flying moves. Later on, Awesome pulls out a table and Awesome bombs DDP through it and puts him on the stretcher. Wait, what's the point of a stretcher? Just beat him up and throw him into the ambulance. See, look, DDP easily flops off of it. Awesome then makes himself look even stupider by throwing DDP back into the ring. Though I will admit we do get a great highlight being Awesome's amazing top rope splash twice in a row. Seriously, he had a really underrated frog splash. But he misses the third one crashing into pilot chairs. DDP's ex-wife Kimberly then interferes with a lead pipe, but then gets dragged to the back by Stacy Keebler as Mark Madden makes another shitty joke, saying, Snoochie Boochies. You, sir, are no Jason Muse. But that ain't like us at all, all slapsticky and shit, running around like a couple of dickheads, saying, What's that shit you got us saying? Oh, um, Snoochie Boochies. Snoochie Boochies. Who the fuck talks like that? That is fucking baby talk. DDP low blows Mike on the top rope, then hits him with the diamond cutter. Awesome is on the stretcher when an ultra instinct Derek Bischoff shows up with a chair, only to get easily yeeted by DDP. But then Canyon gets up from his wheelchair and betrays DDP to help Awesome get the win? What the flying fuck? Son of a bitch, we actually had a good match here until that idiotic swerve. And hell, with the interference from earlier from Kimberly and Stacey Keebler, it was almost like Kimberly was trying to fuck up the match with more idiotic interference, then Stacey Keebler dragged her out of the match, and the match continued, but then fuck, we had to have the stupid fucking swerve. Damn it, we actually could have had a genuinely good fucking match here. Uh, sadly for that, I can only give it a C+. Probably the best match so far, but trust me, that will not be saying much. Our next match is a 
boot camp match, whatever the fuck that is, between Booker T as G.I. Bro during his brief stint as leader of M.I.A. against Sean Stasiak. Yeah, that's the best way to describe this. It's a 12-minute snore fest that has another outside interference with Chuck Palumbo. It's a D. Next. Up next is supposed to be a tables match between Shane Douglas and The Wall, but as Franchise cuts a promo where he calls Ric Flair Dick Flair, ha ha, and changes it to a 3 out of 5 tables match? Okay, I love me some table smashing, but that's just overkill. Wall gets in the ring and hits a gorilla press slam, as Douglas fights back, but Wall reverses a neckbreaker and hits a clothesline. Then, impressively, Shane gets the big man up for a front suplex, then clotheslines him out of the ring. Then hits a drop kick as Wall comedically flops over the table, not through it. They brawl some more as Wall chokeslams Shane through a table, then he does it again, then they brawl next to the stage as there just so happens to be a ladder and a stack of three tables next to the stage. Like, nobody sets it up, it's just there. Right, sense to me! Douglas shoves Wall off the ladder as Wall crashes through the tables. It's a D. It went to shit as soon as they left the ring. Next one. The next match is Scott Steiner versus Tank Abbott in an Asylum match, which I think is supposed to be for Scott's US title. It's not really made clear. Then literally as these guys are fighting, it's announced that Rick Steiner has been added to the match, making it a handicap match, and drastically bringing down Scotty's 141 and 2 third per chance chance of winning! The numbers don't lie! Then the aforementioned Asylum gets lowered down as it's clearly too fucking small to do anything exciting in. After like 30 seconds of them beating up Scott, Tank goes to hit Scott with a chain but hits nobody as Rick just falls down. Steiner recliner, it's over. This match is a massive fucking dud. Complete waste of your fucking time. After that, Hulk Hogan cuts a typical Hulk Hogan promo. Then the Hulkster takes on... Billy Kidman? This is some universe mode level shit. Oh yeah, and this match is like 75% of all Hulkster's matches in WCW. It fucking sucked. Hogan dominated for the most part, and Kidman didn't get to showcase his high-flying offense, like, at all. And we have more fucking interference from Tori Wilson and Horace Hogan as the special referee. Yeah, remember when, Hor when Horace Hogan was a fucking thing? Ugh, this is one of the stupidest and weirdest mismatches in wrestling history. What the fuck was Russo thinking? Dude, what the fuck were they fucking thinking? It's an F. And of course, Hogan won a title shot for Bash at the Beach in this match. And yeah, that would lead to one of the most infamous moments in not only WCW, but wrestling history in general. And I think Hogan perfectly summed it up, saying that that's why the company is in the damn shape it is, because of bullshit like this. Anyway, next one. Up next, it's a career-threatening match with the Nature Boy Ric Flair defending his career against his son David. It's... Nothing spectacular, but nothing that bad either. I did mention on my previous video covering David's entire career that this is one of the better matches on a dumpster fire of a show. But then we get more fucking interference as Vince Russo beats Rick with a bat and handcuffs him. David beats on his dad a little bit more until the ref yanks him off. Then Reed Flair jumps the rail and low blows Russo and gives his dad the keys to the handcuffs. So then Rick fights back as Ashley Flair locks the cuffs on Russo. Rick locks a figure four on David and wins, then chops Russo for good measure. I'm gonna give this match, I don't know, a C? Like, it's still better than some of the other crap we'll see, we've seen before this, or and we'll see after this, but it's, it's nothing that great. I don't know, I, I ain't got much to say here. I mean, you can go ahead and watch my previous video on David Flair's entire career, er, but, uh, yeah, there's just nothing much to say here. Okay, up next sounds good. It's Vampiro vs. Sting. How the fuck could they possibly fuck this up? Just tell me that. What's the gimmick? A Human Torch match? Yeah, sounds like shit. And Sting cuts a promo saying that Vampiro has to light him on fire on top of the Titantron to win. Sting gets in the ring. Uh-huh. Good. And it's shit. 
They go up to the top of the screen. The lights start flickering so we can't see them. Light on fire and obvious fucking stunt double and toss him off the top of the fucking cage. Hey, this guy's a great big phony. For fuck's sake, all they had to do here was let Sting and Vampiro wrestle. That's a perfect summation of their entire feud in WCW. Just let them wrestle a normal fucking match. But they didn't do that. It was either a minute long squash match, or a cage match with a bunch of interference, or this pile of crap. Fuck! Seriously, whoever the fuck came up with this shit, whether it be Russo, or Bischoff, or anybody else who was writing for WCW at the time, it's clear to me that they are nothing more than a stone. This match is another fucking dud. Next one. The main event is gonna be just as bad, isn't it? So before the world title main event between Jeff Jarrett and Kevin Nash, Ernest Miller introduces Conan as the guest bell ringer, Rey Mysterio as the timekeeper, Disco Inferno as belt keeper, Juventud as the ring announcer, and himself as the backup referee. This match gets started as Nash tosses Jared across the ring and batters him in the corner, but then they stop to stare off into space. I think it's supposed to build up Goldberg? I don't fucking know. Nash clotheslines Jared out of the ring, but Jared shoves him into the ring post. Both guys start brawling in the crowd because I guess fuck the rules at this point. The filthy animals then start beating up Nash as it turns into a seven on one handicap match essentially. As Nash then has to fight everybody off, then there's a ref bump. Miller tries to do a fast count, but Nash kicks out and fights everybody off as Jarrett nearly botches the stroke and Nash still kicks out. Jarrett goes for a flying guitar shot, almost scoring all the tropes of a slap nuts match. But Nash catches him with a choke slam, but the cat pretends to have something in his eye so he can't count the three. Nash has enough as he jackknifes Miller, then he hits the jackknife on Jarrett, but Rick Steiner stops the new ref, because I guess this match didn't have enough fucking people in it! Then Tank Abbott and Scott Steiner show up, because I guess they didn't stink up the place enough earlier, and they gotta make this match even more fucking ridiculous. Everybody's beating up Nash until Goldberg shows up in a fucking monster truck! Okay, this should be badass. Goldberg is gonna beat everybody up and save the day, right? 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 Nope. It's another fucking swerve. Goldberg turns heel and spears Nash. Jarrett wins. This match is an F minus. All the guys from the New Blood come out and they celebrate. The show ends with people throwing garbage into the ring and fans probably going to ask for fucking refunds. Oh, fuck. Holy shit was this show bad. I stand by this being one of the worst pay-per-views I've ever seen. I feel genuinely bad for anyone that was in attendance there or paid to watch this pay-per-view at home. You can argue that there were a few decent and passable matches, but the booking is atrocious with outside interference everywhere. You have the opener being ruined by interference. You have the tag team match where Vito pretty much abandons his partner. You have Chris Canyon faking an injury, faking a broken neck and being paralyzed. Like, that is just fucked up. And, yeah, just every single fucking match. You have Booker T and Sean Stasiak being boring as hell until Chuck Palumbo interferes. And then you have Sting and Vampiro's idiotic big phony falling off the top of the cage. Like, oh my fuck, this is horrible. That main event is by far one of the worst matches in wrestling history that I have ever fucking seen. This match, this show, just needs to be avoided like the fucking plague. It's awful. Well, mother machachos, that's the end of the video, and boy was it a slog to get through. I do plan on making more videos in the future, I'm tackling more Wrestling Society X, some more 100% Lucha, a couple more top 10 ideas I have in the works. Yeah, just a lot of different things. And anyway, pile drive that like button, smack someone in the head with that bell icon, and subscribe for more wrestling content. See you later. Fuck, mother, mother, fuck, mother, mother, fuck, fuck, mother.
motherfuck, motherfuck, noise, noise, noise. One, two, one, two, three, four. Noise, noise, noise. Smoking weed, smoking weed. Doing coke, drinking beers. Drinking beers, beers, beers. Rolling fatties, smoking blunts. Who smokes the blunts? Who smoke the blunts? Rolling blunts and smoking weed. Uh, let me get a nickel bag. Fifteen bucks, little man. Put that shit in my hand. If that money doesn't show, then you owe me, owe me, oh. My jungle love, yeah. Oh, we, oh, we, oh. I think I wanna know you, know ya. Yeah, what?